What's unacceptable is how Washington continues to screw the middle class over. Now, a guy who's been fighting against that is Representative Alan Grayson. He's a former congressman and a future congressman because he just got elected to Florida's 8th District in Orlando. Congressman Grayson, great to have you here. Uh, first of all, talk to me about the grand bargain. Uh, as it's currently structured, are you in favor of it or against it? I'm entirely against it. Look, uh, Naomi Klein wrote a whole book about this called The Shock Doctrine. This is an artificial shock. It's being induced uh, to, in order to be able to justify policies you could not possibly justify in the merits. And I think people are getting very frustrated about this. The polls clearly show that over three quarters of the population doesn't want any cuts in benefits for Social Security or any cuts in benefits for Medicare in order to be able to reduce the deficit. What they want, a majority, want cuts in the defense budget and they want an end to the war in Afghanistan to reduce the, the deficit. And instead what we're seeing is this artificial creation. Right after we saw a real crisis, we saw a real crisis in Hurricane Sandy, and that's what a real crisis looks like, an artificial crisis that's being instituted to steal from us, to steal from the middle class, and to steal from people in need. It's so refreshing to hear a Democratic congressman actually say that. So now, unfortunately, not only do you have the Republicans against you, it appears that you've got the administration against you. They can't wait to do this grand bargain. So how in the world do progressive Democrats fight back to make sure it doesn't happen? Well, first, we have to make sure people understand there's a third choice. Okay, we can't have the Republican Party saying we want to strip away your Medicare and your Social Security like they do in the Ryan budget, which they all voted for and which passed the House. And then the Democratic Party say, have half. That doesn't work. There's got to be a third alternative. Somebody has to say, no, that's just not the way we're going to do it. We're not going to strip money from the people in need. We're not going to throw grandma from the train. We're just not going to do it. What you're going to see is that this has become, become a litmus test. This has become a litmus test on the, de in the Democratic Party in the same way that, that, that tax cuts for the rich, favoring tax cuts for the rich, has become a litmus test in the Republican Party. Anybody who votes for cuts in Social Security and cuts in Medicare can expect a primary in the year 2014. Oh, that would be terrific. Now, as you go into this Congress, and, and unfortunately you're going to get there after the lame duck session where they might cut this grand bargain, how much of a fighting squad do you have with you? How many progressives can stand up and actually say that? Is it a large enough block to actually throw a roadblock into, the, into what's happening? Yes, but it shouldn't come to that. The Democratic Party should be united. We are the party that created Social Security. We are the party that created Medicare. We should stand behind it and we should protect it. It's amazingly popular among the voters. Why should we shoot ourselves in the head by saying we're going to end these programs or even cut back these programs when we created them and the voters love them? I, it is such a good question. Unfortunately, there is no good answer for that, except for the fact that, of course, a lot of the Democratic Party establishment also takes money from corporations and the rich and the powerful. And so no matter what the election says, uh, the rich and the powerful, including the defense contractors, wind up winning anyway. We, we hope that you can be successful in your fight back uh, on the policy issues. And as always, thank you so much for joining us, Congressman Grayson. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.